now that I have the furnace completed, there's some pieces of equipment we're going to need for our foundry. So today, I'm going to build a pair of lifting tongs and a pouring shank. And I'm also going to show you some other pieces of equipment that we'll need that I already own. So to get started, we're going to build a pair of lifting tongs. All of that on this episode of The Art of Boat Building. As I showed in the last episode, I have a pair of lifting tongs. Uh, these tongs, however, are designed for a number 40 crucible. And a number 40 crucible will hold nearly 120 pounds of bronze. So it's designed for two people to lift the crucible up out of the furnace. So the crucible that we have is a number six crucible. Now, these tongs that I have and this photograph here are some tongs that are made by a company called McIngleven. And these tongs here are designed for a number 10 crucible. Now, these are the smallest professional lifting tongs that they have. So what I need to do is to reverse engineer that a little bit so that I can produce a pair of tongs that will fit our number six crucible. So the first thing that I did was I made a little template. So what I did is I cut a couple of pieces of plywood to make a template that fit the width of the crucible like this. Now the two handles will be attached here, so when you spread the handles apart, then the bottom jaws will open up as well. So once I determined that, I then made a template uh, out of cardboard here that will uh, represent the clamping jaw of the um, tongs. Now I'll need, of course, two of these, one on each side. So once I got those templates determined, I then put together a scale drawing of the parts that I need. So you can see here, these are the two uh, templates scaled out of what I'll need and where I'll need to drill that hole for it to pivot. Now, this long side here is where the handles will get welded on, as in this part of the drawing. So there will be half-inch uh, rod, and I've determined that about three feet is the right length. So here's where the jaws will be welded onto, which would be the short side of the, this um, gusset here. And the other thing is some safety mechanisms that I'll show a little bit later. So the first thing I need to do is to transfer my templates onto this steel plate. And once I get those laid out, then it's a matter of getting them all cut out.
Well, after I got all of my pieces made, I strapped the two uh, lifting brackets on here and I positioned them so that they were both exactly four inches down from the top of the crucible. So now that I've got that positioned and I can take my pivot here and put that so that it's right in the center like that. And then I'm going to tack weld that so that I've got those attached. I've got all the welding done on the jaws now and I'm pretty happy with the way they work. Um, so when it's separated, it kind of comes up very easily and when it's down and clamped, um, it'll pick up the crucible. Now I want to do uh, one more thing before I put the handles on there and that is to add a safety stop. And there's one on this uh, lifting tongs that I have up here and you can see that what it does is it stops the jaws from crushing more than they need to to lift the crucible. So what I'm going to do is to uh, weld on here a couple of little tabs. Uh, one of them will go right here like that. And the other one, uh, you can see I actually drilled and tapped a quarter inch uh, hole in there earlier. So this one then will go on here like this. And so that way I'll be able to adjust this so that it won't have any undue pressure on the crucible. So the next step is get those welded on there. All right, now that we've got that done, I can uh, get the handles welded on. Now we'll see how they work. Move them apart. Looks pretty good. Uh, so there's one more thing that I want to add, and that is I'm going to put a bracket across here so that when it's uh, tight, it will lock it in place. Uh, that way it won't accidentally open up on me. So I'm going to do that next. They're all finished. So you can see here, I added a uh, second notch in here so that they will stand when they're in the open position. So the way they're going to work is they will go down over the top of the crucible like so. And then we'd lift this bar up and move it over and click it in like that, which will lock it. And then you'll be able to pick it up out of the uh, furnace. Uh, you can see it's going to be very easy to lift it with one hand and it's in there really very securely. 
So I'm uh, pretty happy with that. So to release it, then you just open that up and it'll clap, catch there, and then out you go. So uh, now that we have the lifting tongs all finished, the next step is to build the pouring shank. Well, as with the lifting tongs, I do have a pouring shank that is set up for a number 40 crucible. Now, one of the things about this uh, pouring shank is that it's designed for two people. Uh, one would be on the, the um, what we call the bullhorn end, and one on just the straight end. So one guy would just hold it, let it pivot in his hand, and the other one would use those bullhorns in order to uh, pour the bronze out of the crucible. So I want to make a pouring shank that is small enough that one person can operate it. And also it needs to be small enough so that it will hold our number six crucible. Now there are three things that I like about the design of this that I'm going to incorporate uh, into my pouring shank. The first being is I like where it has these three adjustable tabs so that you'd be able to adjust where that crucible would ride inside of the shank. The second thing I like is this curve that it has to the handle here, which helps lower the center of gravity of where the crucible would be sitting. And the third is the safety mechanism here that will hold, clamps down and holds the top of the crucible. Uh, mine won't be quite this complicated, but I'm going to try to replicate it uh, to a certain degree. So as usual, I've put together a small uh, shop drawing to get started. I've got my shop drawing here and you can see it's pretty straightforward. Uh, basically a pipe with a ring on it. So the first thing I did was I determined the diameter, the inside diameter of this ring. And the way that I did that is I came up the crucible about two thirds and measured there and it was about six inches. So I added an inch all the way around which made it uh, an inch on each side, so it made it eight inches. Uh, the next thing then is this steel pipe for the shank, and I have a piece of black, uh, one inch black pipe here, and I found this um, piece of one and a quarter inch pipe that slides on there very nicely. So I'm going to use that as my sliding mechanism here in order for this safety device to clamp down on the top of that crucible. Uh, then you can also say I put this little bend in here to lower the um, center of the gravity. And the last thing that I did was I added a little T here to the end so it'll be easier to turn the shank when you're pouring. So the first thing I need to do is to make this 8 inch ring.
Well, that worked out pretty good. So the next step now is to get that um, one inch pipe and bend it and then get it welded onto the ring. Well, I've got the handle all welded onto the ring there and see how it fits the crucible like that and then we'll be able to pour it like so. So my next step is to figure out this um, lever here that's going to act as a, a safety gauge to hold that crucible in there. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is to weld a little tab right here and then make a little template to figure out how that'll fit. What we've got made here is a uh, couple of little tabs that I've spaced with some washers and what I'm going to do now is to weld that on there like that. So I've got the clamping arm all finished up and I found this uh, piece of square stock that is hollow and I cut a groove in there and uh, drilled a hole. So I think that's going to work pretty good. Now what I need to do is to decide where this sliding piece on the handle needs to be in reference to where I'd be holding on to it when I'm pouring. Uh, so once I've determined that, then I'll be able to weld a little tab on here and attach, uh, shorten this to whatever length it needs to be. And then that should make it so that that, when you pull it back and forth, that will left and close that lever arm. Well, it works really good. Now that I have all of this mechanism done, all I need to do is to weld a T on the end and I'll be all done. Well, I've already shown you how the lifting tongs work. So you get them out of the furnace, you set them here on some crucible blocks. And in this case, I'm just using a couple of fire brick. So you then release the lifting tongs and the pouring shank would then pull up and engage the crucible like so and lock down our safety device there. And then 
be able to pour the bronze. So now that we've got those two things completed, I wanted to show you a couple of other pieces of equipment that will be needed for the foundry. So the first thing that I want to show is a pair of charging tongs. And these are a pair of tongs that you can see articulate and you would be able to grab a hold of a piece of bronze and then insert it into the crucible once it's in the furnace. I uh, see I already have a pair of these, so I didn't need to make any. The next thing are some ingot molds. And these ingot molds are basically a piece of three inch angle iron that I welded together. And I drafted the ends so that they would not be, um, so that the, the ingots will pop right out of there once uh, they're cooled. And the final thing is a pyrometer. The pyrometer is a device it, that is used in order to measure the temperature of the molten metal. You can see on the far end down here, this part is used as a probe that will go into the molten uh, metal in the crucible. And it's really important to know what temperature that the uh, metal is when you're casting it so that you get consistent castings. Well, after I completed these two tools, I took and made the drawings a little bit more detailed on some of the pieces that I had made. Some of the details include the templates for all the pieces I made and how all those mechanisms go together. Both of these drawings will be available as free downloads on my Patreon account. So anybody at the skipper or above level will be able to have access to those files. So that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on the Art of Boat Building.